Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's video, today's video is going to be about how I made this uh, little fox. It's not so little. Uh, so she was a commission uh, based on one of my previous dolls. Uh, there's a little bit of variances. So we've got the blue tips, uh, different colour blue, uh, the blue tail tip and we have a little uh, symbol on, on the head. She's also got two different coloured eyes. I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, and also this little um, necklace. Uh, so I'm going to go through how I made her um, in this video. So she's a commission, mind you. I don't know if I've said that. Um, so if you want to see how I made her, then uh, keep watching. All right, so I'm starting off with a resin cast of the head. So for this one, I cast some glass eyes in the actual head. That tutorial is available in my shop at creaturesofnat.com. Uh, it comes in a video tutorial and I believe a PDF tutorial as well. So I'm just cleaning up the little resin bubbles and stuff that you get in uh, resin casting, uh, just making it um, a bit more clean because uh, you sort of get flashing when you do casting um, from the mold lines um, so yeah just cleaning that up a little bit using a just a small sharp uh, <laughs> supposed to be a Stanley knife but it um or a scalpel but it's broken so it's only up now so this is what it looks like once it's been um, all cleaned up you can see how the eyes are uh, coming through and um, uh, there's little bits and pieces that I've cleaned up as well so I can start painting up all um, all of the parts that I'm going to paint so I usually prime my surfaces that I'm going to paint first with a primer um, and then I can go ahead and start painting I use a brand of paint called Chromacryl uh, it's just an Australian made brand but uh, it's water based acrylic but you can use any sort of water based acrylic paint that you can get your hands on this isn't terribly expensive paint either so um, you don't need anything that's too expensive uh, and you don't need brushes that are too expensive either because you end up breaking them <laughs> uh, so I usually paint around the eyes the nose and the mouth um, obviously using the black paint uh, if I'm not doing a different colored face then I'll use mainly pink or something like that uh, and then I usually leave it to fully dry before moving on to anything else. So same deal with the feet. This is something that I've uh, molded and cast in resin again and uh, painting it up with that same black paint. Um, I usually give this paint a few coats uh, just to make sure it's um, it's it's solid <laughs> and there's no see-through. Uh, but you don't have to be too particular about how you're painting or too neat because uh, if you're covering it with fur then uh, it'll all get covered up anyway. So I'm not terribly neat with this either. Um, I'd rather just sort of get it over and done with um, and then once that's done we can start moving on to the fur so this like I said at start this is a little variant of a doll that I previously made called Nadir and I'm um, using a different colored blue um, and I'm just marking out the patterns that I'm going to end up cutting out uh, so this will be a little bit more of a fiddly body I've got my pattern that I'm going to be marking out so I'll need to do a couple of different cuts and a, a bit more sewing for this doll just because of the different sections of color that's going to be um, in it so I'm just marking out all the blue sections first so they're the smaller ones and then I'll be marking out um, the white sections the front of it's obviously white and the back of it is black so uh, I'll need to combine all of those bits of fur together so I've just sort of uh, sectioned up my body patterns and then drew them up on uh, the back of the faux fur fabric and then I can cut them out and sew it together. I leave a little bit more of a seam line as well because um, obviously there'll be a little bit less fabric when you're sewing because of the seam line so I just add a tiny little seam line uh, to both sides of, that I'm going to be joining. And I have a body pattern um, like a not a tutorial but a little guide of how I make them um, over on my patreon so you can check that out if you're wondering how I make my body patterns I have a pattern for a moth wing coming up in this week's uh, this month's patreon uh, printable so if you want a free pattern for moth wings you can head there it'll be up at the end of the month um, of July so uh, I'll let everyone know when it's up anyway
So a little look at the blue fabric that I'm going to be using. It's got uh, uh, like a tiny bit of black tipping at the end of the at the end of the pile, which is quite nice. It's really, really good quality fabric too, quite thick. Uh, so I'm going to be cutting out all of these little pieces using a small pair of sharp scissors. And I've left it this in real time just to, so you can get a better idea of how uh, to insert the blades in between the pile um, and just to sort of take it easy and be careful not to cut the pile uh, unless you're, I guess, unless you're shaving the whole thing. Um, but yeah, I, use, I, I prefer to use these small scissors to get in between. They're quite sharp too, so they will cut um, as soon as I cut. <laughs> um, but I've used blunt scissors before and they're really a pain. So I highly recommend getting a pair of sharp scissors or sharpening some that you have. And same deal for the black fabric, uh, they're all relatively the same length and the same sort of texture so um, it's kind of, unless you're looking for a different texture, it's kind of important to keep an eye on um, what kind of pile your fabric has and sort of matching up um, matching up piles to make sure it's like a seamless flow. Uh, again, with the same scissors, you can see inserting it in between. This one's a little bit easier because the fabric, the backing of the fabric is a bit more uh, stiff. So you can, you can sort of cut the back a bit easier. And same deal with the white fabric, uh, again same same uh, length of the pile and same sort of texture. Uh, these are just some little offcuts. I have a huge bag of white offcuts and it's perfect for little projects like this where I only need a small section of white um, or a small section of black or something. Uh, so I always keep my bigger offcuts as well. So once they're all cut out, I can start pinning the sections that I'm going to be sewing together. So I'm starting off uh, by pinning the blue section to the white section. So I'll be sewing that first and then I'll sew the black onto the blue section. Um, just being mindful uh, which way the pile goes, you want your fur to all go into the same direction. So I've made that mistake many times at the, at the beginning, but um, once you get into a habit of remembering which way the pile is going, it will become natural to you. Um, and I use a sewing machine to sew up most of my work as well, um, depending on what type of body that I'm doing. So this one, obviously using the sewing machine, it's much faster and much stronger. Um, and this is what you can see I've done on the sewing machine. Left the, left the back end open as well as the legs and the neck area so I can easily turn it the right way around. Um, but before I do that, I usually cut little slits into the seams just so the fabric has a bit more give and your posability is a bit more a bit, a bit better. Um, same thing with teddy bear making, um, cutting their seams. So once that's all done, I can start flipping it the right way around. Uh, the bigger you, you, you leave your holes, I guess, the easier it is to flip. Um, just be mindful about uh, the smaller enclosed sections. Uh, if you're having trouble, then you can just get a blunt wooden tool or a blunt plastic tool. Don't use metal because it will um, it will break the fabric and rip it, so it will leave a hole in the fabric. So once that's done, this is what we have. You can see the body starting to come together. Uh, depending on what type of armature I'm using, this one has a spine uh, of ball and socket armature spine, as well as um, a, a wire armature legs. So once that's done, um, I am have a tutorial all about armatures and lots of videos and stuff that you can check out um, so if you're interested in more information um, you can check those out on my YouTube or either my Patreon they're, they're sort of scattered everywhere <laughs> uh, just go on a little hunt and you'll find some so once that armature has been inserted I can start sewing everything up I usually use a ladder stitch um, and once everything's sewn up I uh, end up gluing all the parts together the fabric bits to the resin I should say using a tacky fabric glue um, and also uh, in the process of sewing I'm just making sure the pile is actually out of the um, the, the seam. So I was working on the tail here um, and then I'm just inserting it into the armature and then I'll be final doing the final sewing of uh, the doll for this one and then I can start moving on to the final processes of finishing the dolls. Uh, for the stuffing I use polyfill you can see a little bit in the corner there um, which is the same sort of stuff that you can find in cushions. 
so once it's all sewn up, this is some this is what it looks like. Uh, needs a desperate shave or a trim. And uh, I'll be adding some faux fur to the head as well. Uh, so this is what it looks like when I've added the faux fur. I'll also give that a little bit of a trim and do a final once over to make sure all of the, uh, the fur looks, you know, all together and <laughs> flowing. Uh, so this is what it looks like once it's, uh, I've, I've given it a bit of a trim. You can see that the fox shape really comes out with a proper trim. Um, and then I go ahead and refine all of the areas that I need to fix up from I don't know, any loss of character or stuff, just to enhance some sections um, of the doll and just go over all of the areas that I painted to make sure it's all uh, looking good and fully covered. Uh, also painting um, some of the mouth sections as well because sometimes you lose a bit of detail when you start adding some first to the face. Um, and then finally for the this doll the customer requested a little uh, symbol on on the head of this fox so i went ahead and added the symbol to the face just using some fabric glue um, fabric paint um and just carefully marking out where the um where the where the symbol is going to go um and then adding any other little details like whiskers and um anything else that the customer wants uh, i also made a little necklace for the customer as well um using some moon and just some little stones and stuff and uh just on a note on the um patterning you can Make, do patterns any way you like. Um, you can use an airbrush, you can use a, a brush, a textile or anything like that. I decided to go with a brush for this one because the symbol was going to be gold and um, I wanted to make sure it was had sharp edges. Sometimes you can't really achieve those sharp edges with an airbrush. Well, I can't anyway, but um, you can get the idea of what the symbol looks like in these photos. So that's it for this little video. I have some dolls in my shop if you're looking for it and possibly open for commissions so you can reach me at creaturesofnat.com and my shop on there thanks to my patrons for supporting me i really appreciate it you can find that link in the description um, and also instagram and facebook at creatures of nat and i'll catch you in the next one bye